Thank you, Colin. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, it's a real pleasure to be in Ottawa and a real pleasure to be traveling with three other poets and Chris. <laughs> We're all having a really good time. Um, I'd like to start with, um, how's the mic? Is it, can everyone hear me? Okay. I'd like to start with a few poems from this, the first section. A sign. In June, we were carried away by the length of days. We walked the streets like lovers, full of the light and the whole green, blooming world. We imagined ourselves eternal. And when the cottonwoods released their white down over the fields and the schoolyard square, the children playing lifted their hands and faces to the sky like shepherds toward a star. In disbelief, it seemed at the time, but when I think of it now, believing. Bare life is the woman sitting on a bench shelling peas. Is the wood frame house behind her and a line of poplars to the east and then the shed? Is the question of wind? Is her eye fixed on the camera's eye with something like refusal? Is knowing that a stone thrown into water has its moment of pure sound? Is wholeness claim? There's a place near where I uh, grew up. Um, it's kind of on the edge of one township and uh, another. Uh, these are rural townships uh, near outside of Niagara-on-the-Lake. This next poem is called Town Line. The thing is this. There were low clouds blooming white along the top sides, down the Town Line Creek, Fronds of sumac, browned, and rushes on the bank thinned out to almost nothing. There were crabapple trees to the left of me, deep snow, an empty field past that, and up ahead a tractor idling on the road. Two figures stood there, maybe three. Farmers in the winter months who'd say, too cold. Too cold, they'd say, and talk about the wind machines, how many nights they'd turn them on, who could sleep with the noise, who couldn't. There'll be frost damage, wait and see, they'd say, and answer, sure as anything. And they'd watch me come down town line road in slow time, a minute hand before the hour. I'd see them standing there, just two of them, not three, the third a dog. And then I'd pass the Lambert place, their voices at my back like the ends of branches where the tips, unpruned, lift slightly into air. I think I've moved the podium. Uh, as Colin mentioned, um, I worked as a pianist for many years and uh, this next poem uh, came out of my experience as a young, um, hopeful musician, spending a lot of time practicing. Pianists at night. At midnight, we walked with the music still burning our fingers. We knew it that way, on the skin. Snow fell in the winter months. Sometimes the cold left a seal on our foreheads, reminding us the world still lives, still eats, still takes the garbage out and sleeps with its face to the wall. Sometimes a certain phrase would stay longer than the others. We'd play it on imaginary keys in our pockets, as if our mouths, uh, sorry, as if our fingers were mouths and singing. 
street lights made perfect circles up the avenue. A number of the poems in this book uh, have to do with farm life, rural life. Um, as I said, I'm from Niagara-on-the-Lake. Uh, I'll, read, I'll read a few of those uh, about, I suppose, the dark side and the bright side of, of living on a, on a fruit farm. <clears throat> the Hired Man. A rifle in his hand, disgruntled, dark with nerve, he crossed the packing yard to where my father stood. From high up in the barn, I saw his black head lurch, a flash of gun, my father springing into endless time. I heard the metal snap, the cartridges kicked out in angry steps across the gravel lot. Down below, the work went on, the packers silent at the belt. But in the loft, the dust rang bullet fire. The roof blew open over me and swallows shot through crazy with light. <clears throat> Cicadas. Just take some water. <clears throat> He said what I was hearing was the sound of hydro wires, a buzzing sound that still reminds me of those dry mouth days of August, days of dust and diesel fuel, hot peaches in our hands, the high noon of summer beating the orchards white. It still reminds me of our shorts, worn thin as the weeds that grew waist high in the ditches, our scabbed up knees below the hems coming down, and the road we walked along, my brother and I, popping tar bubbles under our shoes. I can't see his face as it was then, as if I never looked at him. I did, it wasn't that, but a knowing he was there that I remember, a second me or more of me, a longer arm or leg, a third hand, fourth, the way we know as children sameness, taking everything as fixed and right and infinite. And so we walked under those black wires, sizzling through the pears past Fraser's place and toward the lake, listening to that sound so like the one cicadas make, believing in it as a certainty, as we believed in God, in leather belts, in the deep pit of the well and the one square of light high in the barn where the dust moved with the swallows that lit the space like dark shooting stars. The restlessness, the wonder, walking side by side, not knowing insect life could rattle in our ears like that, not knowing much at all, but that we were thirsty, that the sky was a smooth dome over our heads, and the tracing of the city barely visible across the lake was only that, an outline of the world. The ditches overgrown with chicory and Queen Anne's lace were what mattered in the moment, and the moment mattered on and on and on. I know now the sound cicadas make. I know that we were wrong. The sudden flare of listening is itself a kind of pitch. I know what stays in the ear is closer to song than speech. And echo is one turn from silence, one turn from never having heard at all. Sisters. They hung the deer by their hooves from the rafters. Seven deer, as many men, and they left them there all night. Dark shapes in the barn, the deer spirits hovering. In the morning, they came to tear down the hides. 
Each man took a side and pulled from the cut with the sound of a tree cracked loose in lightning, split like that, the bodies swaying purple from the hooks. We stood there, you and I, taking it in, storing an enormous forming burl, wild grains we couldn't name, swirls, something about nakedness and force, shame and pity, wilderness and men and work and certainty, something about lost skins piled on the floor in the early light that I remember shone on your small round head. This next poem is a little bit lighter. Um, a couple of years ago, I decided to try to learn something about the Polish language. I, I wanted to um, read some of my favorite um, poets in the original language. Uh, so I took a, a couple of classes at the University of Victoria, which is close to where I live. I still don't read Polish very well, but we had a party at the end of the uh, last session, and this poem was written after that. The Polish class sits down to dinner. This table isn't long enough to hold our consonantal efforts, or wide enough to wrestle seven cases heard in the palatals, the plural forms of verbs, the pan or pani or the nasal vowels. But the candles in small glasses end to end flicker optimistically. The dogs heavy at our feet are nonchalant. They've dealt with verbal inconsistencies before. And now the dusk just moving in behind our chairs becomes the perfect present tense. We shine. Tamara, bring out the bowls and platters, the steaming sausages and wine, the bigos and bread, the poppy seed cakes. We understand this middle distance. We've raised the white flags of our senses, declared ourselves beguiled. To Chopin mazurkas, to Miskiewicz and Miłosz, we raise our glasses. On our lips, a hint of cinnamon, pear, elderberry, and sage. Something like dialect is taking us in. Something like speaking in tongues. And for the last uh, poem, I'd like to read you um, a poem called Now. It, it begins with a quote from Margaret Avison's poem, Twilight. The quote is, now all the darkness is in the leaves. Now. I hear my children's voices in the room around me now. Treble voices rising with the day. The light from the windows is steep white, as if holiness were a simple matter of curtains and filtered sun on a midweek morning. A rooster cracks the distance. Transparency, is this what draws us back? Was it the white sheets hanging on the line in a wind from the lake? My mother's long brown arms working with the clothespins she kept in a wooden basket on the grass? Was it her low whistling? Was it the piles of laundry here on the floor and my own sons rolling rolling in the deep cottons, their backs and shoulders, knees, as round as their mouths and the circle of desire that made them in the nights those early days. We can never leave. When we ran along the packed down dirt of orchard lanes, between the rows of plum and pear, and the sun burned a circle on our foreheads like a mark of grace, whatever it was in the flight of the red-tailed hawk, whatever was there in the brightness, stayed. We know it by the light from here to there and here. 
my children, run. Your faces stay with me, now all the darkness is in the leaves. Thank you.